The Lucy Vale Dung Beetle Project came because the community was really excited about dung beetles and the benefit that they could provide to them. The summer of 2006, the little summer active beetles that were here, there was just thousands of them and they just shredded the cow dung and there was no big mounds left on the ground and uh, reduced the little black fly numbers to almost zero. All this dung was alive, wriggling with beetles, and it was something that they wanted to, to learn more about. There you go. One, two, three, four. Five. One cow produces 18 kilos of dung each day. 100 cows will produce 1,800 kilos of dung. Now that is a massive amount of dung. So there's a couple of things that can happen with that. It can either be processed by dung beetles and be a real benefit to our soil, or it can be washed into our waterways where it's a real nuisance. That dung has got fantastic uh, nutrients in it. It's got nitrogen, it's got phosphorus, it's got potassium. They are all important uh, nutrients that will enable our pasture to grow. And by burying that dung, the beetles also provide a food source for earthworms. The way dung beetles work is um, a cow pad's dropped, uh, the beetles, one beetle will fly into it and then it gets to be a boy meat girl type thing and other beetles will fly in, a pair get together, dig the, the tunnels, <coughs> line the tunnels with dung, she lays the egg, after they've been in that dung, they both leave after they've laid their eggs and both fly off in different directions to the next dung that they find, then they find another mate and, and on and on the cycle goes. The benefits of dung beetles are many and varied. They make these tunnels where they bury the dung and they make dung balls and that improves the quality of the soil structure. It also allows water to come in and that helps drought proof your property. So they improve the soil three different ways, through the soil structure, through soil biology and soil fertility. They also save farmers a lot of money. So you don't need to put as much fertiliser on when you've got beetles. They do increase the phosphorus level very substantially and most of the other trace elements and that increases all the goodies and decreases the baddies. To get all that organic matter down there over eons, it must build topsoil. There are all different varieties of dung beetles, different species. So some are active in summer, some are active in autumn, and some are active in winter. So the best way is to actually go out and look. Have a look at what's happening in your paddock. Um, so to achieve year-round dung burial, which is what we want, you need to have a range of species. And it's important to get to know what species do I have, when do they operate, and where are my gaps. So if you've got gaps or times of the year where you're not seeing the dung being buried, there's an opportunity there for you to bring in some new species and get that dung in the ground. Wherever we see dung in the paddock and it sits there for more than 24 hours, we have a lost opportunity. This is one of our beetle traps. Very basic, it, it's just a plastic box and a piece of inch mesh. And I've made it into a, a cradle, this one, and you just put dung, they're starting to fly away. Dung on the top of that and just put it out anywhere and leave it for a day and the beetles come, dig down through the dung, fall through the, the mesh and they can't fly out again. Simple, easy, cheap, quick, and I'll put out six or eight or ten for a day to get a good idea of what's in the area over about two, three k's. The small beetles only bury two or three inches and they, they will have two, maybe three generations per year where the larger beetles are all one generation a year uh, and they bury from um, good old fashioned language a foot down to some of them are supposed to go three feet in 
sandy loam. Once you get them established, they're willing little workers. Um, you don't have to um, kick them out of bed in the morning to start work. Dung beetles have a, have a few predators. Uh, these can include foxes, so or another good reason to keep our foxes under control. Uh, some birds uh, will predate on the beetles, but the biggest thing that we need to watch out for is some of the chemical products that we use, particularly the drenches. There's some really good information on our, on our website about how to look at the active ingredient uh, because uh, some products are more dung beetle friendly than other products. We're more than a bit pleased that we have established three new species, all larger beetles that bury a lot deeper. Well, as one of my mates said, um, the beetles put the dung on the ground and then Mother Nature gets all the life going. And I thought that was a fairly good way of putting it. Because dung beetles, they don't look at the fences and say, oh, this is this property. They fly all over the place. So it's something that we can all work together so we achieve a good outcome for everybody. There's some fantastic resources on the internet about dung beetles. Um, the dung beetle resource package is on the Northeast Landcare website and that's a really great spot to get some basic information. Oh, it's crept on me finger. It's fantastic. I think it's oh, yeah, yeah. So we'll do another lot in spring. Yeah. Thank you.